filming. We're All going right. into the wet collection right now. We're getting behind the scenes of the wet collection. Oh, there are stairs. Welcome, Stephanie. We have to go further and further into the bowels of the museum, heading down, really far down. Stairs. <laughs> Where are we going? I don't know. That's why I'm following Straight you. Straight right on. Oh, hello. Okay. We have a little friend here. Oh, All right, damn. here we are. This is our wet collection. Oh. We have about 67,000 preserved specimens here. Um, and they're really important to document the natural history of the region. And a lot of researchers come and um, uh, do analyses and get information from these specimens that we have. Wow. Pretty cool, huh? There are things in the things. <laughs> and we have the largest collection of rattlesnakes in the whole world. I did hear something about that. Oh my god, they're all stuck so. in. There's even more. This is one part of our rattlesnake collection. Whoa. So you can see they're all preserved in ethanol. So they're set, the bodies are set with formalin and they're preserved in 70% ethanol. Formalin, not like not formaldehyde. formaldehyde. Yeah, not, not that stuff. Yeah, once they're set, they're pretty they're nice. And then it's just in alcohol. Yep. Mm -hmm. How long does the process take? Uh, it things? takes about a week get them ready so we get them in they're usually frozen so we'll thaw them for a day and then we uh, inject them with formalin over three days mm. we rinse them and we get them in their final resting places that's crazy it's cool like you can see the rattles on some of them ah. oh oh and you see his little eye in there yeah peeking out <laughs> And then these are just used for research in general, right? Like you mm -hmm. can take little DNA samples off these guys if you wanted. Yeah, you can take DNA samples. Um, you could also, you know, evaluate, you know, what species are where. So sometimes this might have been called a 50 years ago one species, but today biologists realize that it might be a different species. So we can come in, look at genetics, and also look at the morphology. So look at the detailed structures on the snake to say maybe this is actually a different species mm -hmm. so it helps support for um, researchers looking into that kind of species delineations identifying new species because there's actually a lot of species that are like cryptic species so we don't realize that they're species but using dna technology then we discover that they're actually different species that's so cool yeah. oh my god there are so many one little part, and so you can see they're all organized in these um, rolling stacks. Rolling stacks. This is like one of the most space. Space. parts. So I think the rattlesnakes actually know that these are rattlesnakes right here. I think they start down here on the bottom. So this is where the rattlesnake collection starts, right here. So this all the way to that other end is our rattlesnake. So you can see the detailed patterns hold up pretty well. The colors will fade over time, but uh, you can still get a lot of information from the patterning. And then obviously the scale counts and things like that. People also do studies looking at um, diet. So they'll come and request to um, cut open some of these and look what they've been eating. Um, it's really good for documenting disease too. So there's lots of times there's diseases that are emerging that we don't even really know about. So there could be die-offs of uh, species and populations, but we don't even realize that they're, they're, you know, being affected. And then we've collected them so we can document that disease and how it's progressing, where it was, where it was found, and all those good things. That's so neat. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the video now, but I'm like <laughs> so excited that we got this. Yay! Yay.